you're here because you've learned bar chords, but you're still having trouble making them sound good, your hands are getting tired, the bar chords are getting muted or buzzing, and you're just locking up and can't move around the neck, and you finally have come to the right place. I've got three tips for you today that quite frankly don't get talked about very much. These are things that all the pros are doing, but a lot of times they really don't know how to explain them because it just kind of comes second nature to them. So we're gonna talk about these three tips, and then at the end, I'm gonna give you three exercises you can do to practice these tips. If you really work on these things, your bar chords will improve like crazy. They're gonna be easier to play, you're gonna be able to move around, you'll finally be able to use bar chords the way you want it to. Tip number one, pull, don't squeeze. This is maybe the biggest misconception about bar chords that everybody has, and that is that you need to squeeze your hands together. Just think for a second about how much power you have in your left hand squeezing versus let's say your entire arm pulling. Now here we have strong back muscles we can use instead of our hand muscles. So I want you to try this. Put your finger, a bar down on the guitar and then stabilize with your right hand. And now use your back muscles to pull the guitar almost as if you were trying to break it apart right here where the neck meets the body. See how much power you have there versus the squeeze. Now the squeeze is just gonna get your hand tired, it's gonna be weak, but if you can pull on the guitar using your arms and your back muscles, you could actually make a bar without even using your thumb. I'll take my thumb away here and listen. Tip number two, use the side of your finger instead of the pad of your finger. The pad of your finger has a lot of loose skin, there's a lot more fat in there, the side of your finger is a lot bonier. So if you can just take your finger and rotate it a little bit to the side, then you can use the bone to be able to get a nice solid bar across the board. It's really important that your fingers stay straight when you make a bar, so try to avoid the curves. And that's another good reason why going to the side can help. If you're in the natural spot where the finger bends, you're gonna be more inclined to bend. But if you're turned off to the side, it's easier to keep that finger straight. Tip number three, I call this one down and out. And this is about how you position your arm, wrist, and hand. It's really important that they're stacked as much as possible. If your arm is bent at all, you, you lose your power. Think about doing a pull-up, pulling yourself up from something, you're naturally gonna be like this. You would never try to do a pull-up with your hand like this. So when we're trying to make difficult movements on the guitar, we should do the same thing. So depending on how you're holding your guitar, I see a lot of people who have problems with pushing their wrist out and losing power. So you might be trying to make your bar chord, you've got all your fingers down, but in order to do so, you had to bend your wrist out a ton like this. And the problem is now you have no power. It's gonna be buzzing and muting all over the place. So what you can try to fix this is using these two cues down and out. Down refers to your elbow. The lower you can make your elbow, the more likely it is to line up with your wrist. And then out is the other thing you can do. Push your elbow after it goes down, out. Now obviously this is a weird position to be in, but it does stack my hand, arm, and wrist. And from here, I can kind of start to tweak all kinds of movements around me, shift my guitar around a bit, move my elbow down and out a little bit, and then finally I get into a good, strong position where my arm, wrist, and hand is as stacked as possible. That gives me much more power. All right, now I'm gonna give you one exercise for each of these tricks to practice. The first, to practice pulling versus squeezing, it's very simple. All you do is make a bar without your thumb. Start on the first fret, pull using your back muscles, and then take a pick or your thumb or fingers and right across each string. Very important after this, release, move up to the next fret. Try the same thing, still no thumb allowed. Keep up. Make your way all the way up as far as you wanna go and back, and challenge yourself to get each one. Always relax after each rep or you'll build up too much tension. Exercise number two to use the side of your finger. I call these finger slappers. Use only your left hand to slap a bar down. And move up a fret. You're not gonna get all the strings to sound if you don't have a straight finger and you're using a little bit of that side of the finger. This also helps you develop a lot of just general power in your bar finger. It keeps it straight, keeps it strong. So you can do finger slappers up and down the neck. Exercise number three for down and out, it's important to find this position over and over again. This is more about discovering a position than anything. There's a ton of bones, ligaments, muscles in your hand, arm, and wrist, and there's so many combinations of how you can move your hand around. So if you find it, it's not guaranteed you're gonna find it again. So I think the best solution for this is what I would call release reps. Make a bar, let's say first fret, third fret, fifth fret, wherever's comfortable. Fifth fret's a really nice place to start if you're having a lot of trouble. First fret's a bit more challenging. So if I'm at the fifth fret, and I move a little bit down and out, try to shift my positioning around and make a good bar. Now I'm going to release, shake it out, and I have to make it again. That's gonna force me to again, push my elbow down a little bit, drop my shoulder, move out, over and over again. And I have to keep discovering. The more your hand gets used to actually having to make and discover that exact spot, easier it is to recall later. 